back to my channel. I saw this video by a YouTuber by the name of Amy Macedo, I believe I'm, that's how you say her name, but she did a full face using products that she disliked all in this tutorial. Like I had a nice little pile in the corner of my room right over there of products that I just were like, mm -mm, not cutting it. And I thought, the idea of using them in tutorial form is actually really freaking genius. I don't. I know that people typically feel some type of way when you talk about their favorite products or products that they like, but I just have to stress what works for me ain't gonna work for you and vice versa. Some things that my friends use that I cannot stand. And like I said, vice versa. And also just because I am roasting that particular product, it does not mean I don't like the brand. Like there's brands here that you're gonna be like, Jackie, wow, it's a little harsh. Cause I, I like these brands and I, I usually speak favorably about these brands, but you can't win them all guys, you can't win them all. So um, just take it with a light heart, don't take it personal. And hopefully, you know, we can all just kind of like have fun. It's meant to really be funny. It's not meant to like trash. It's meant to be funny, I promise you. I'm gonna get started with a brush set that I actually demoed in a video and you guys saw the way that the brush set performed. And I wouldn't necessarily say it's a product that I hate. It's just not a product I would use again, okay? I did recommend it only because it was so exp inexpensive. It was the Sanlon, I think this is called the Sanlon. It's basically a inexpensive alternative to Artiste brushes, okay? The streak factor of, like it was just like you really have, really, really, gotta get them to work, okay? So I'm gonna be using those. The first product I'm gonna start off with is the It Cosmetics Your Skin But Better CC Cream, which feels like it's got a nice smooth base. It feels like it's got a nice amount of coverage, but it's SPF Infinity and it looks gray on me. Actually, all of their complexion products look gray on me, all of them. And I don't know whose undertone is gray, and they've got some pop and brow products, but their complexion stuff just doesn't, it just doesn't cut for me. So, using the face brush, I'm just, just, who was this, who was, who was this color? I don't know. <laughs> some, there's just a, there's just a disconnect with the undertones. Okay, they're not, just, and I know it's tricky, I get it. It's tricky formulating dark skin foundations. I totally get it. It's not as easy as people may think. You know, when you start adding in SPF, things turn gray, you know? Once you get in the darker deep shade range. But this is absolutely unacceptable! I can tell this probably actually does have a nice amount of coverage. It probably really does, but unfortunately, the undertone, actually, you know, this brush isn't performing as bad as, yeah, never mind. Never mind, just kidding. No woman of color has a great undertone. Like that just doesn't, this is, it's so hard for me to do this video because the perfectionist in me wants things to be pretty and this is not pretty. Aside from like the undertone in cosmetics, their complexion products don't run very dark. So I always find a hard time, you know, like I couldn't even like fix this because it's not even, it needs to be like one shade darker. So. It Cosmetics looks good. I like that I would say about 90% of what I've tried from Marc Jacobs Beauty. There's one product that just didn't quite make the cut. And that is the Remarkable Full Coverage Concealer. I actually tried this about twice. I did give it a few chances and it says it's a full coverage concealer but it feels really watery. It doesn't set well and it's got too much slip and it just, I just never reach for this again ever. Now there's their pen concealer is my jam, but this one, I, I don't know. It feels like a bomb. It literally feels like a lip balm. So I'm going to take shade number seven of that concealer and one of these under eye brushes and just go in. I just felt like with the beauty blender, this moved around a bit too much. It didn't set nicely. I don't want you guys to just think that this is just going to be a video where I'm just throwing these things on. I'm actually putting effort into the application. I honestly look like a burnt, like I look like a piece of toast. I like the shade of the concealer. I just didn't like how it applied. Why is my face itching? Why is my face itching? Probably my serums. I take a lot, I do a lot of serums. So um, in case you thought this look couldn't get any worse, I am team makeup forever all the way, honey. Don't ever get it twisted. If you are my complexion, actually I'm not even gonna say that. I'm, I'm gonna say, 
if you are like medium dark to like deep dark unless of course you're going for the uh, goblin look the goblin look is popping uh one month out of the year and uh, unfortunately it's not august yeah it's just too white it's just too stark white for me i have a lot of makeup artist friends that swear by this under eye powder it's phenomenal for film okay print if you know you're being photographed with flash girl bye don't even think about it just don't just don't i get it not every product works for different mediums and platforms okay so this is just going to be when i'm on a uh, dr phil powder okay that's it that's it no flash photography none i feel like what they need to do is make this powder in like more shades like maybe like a golden or like a tan i was so excited to try these brow products from milani because I love the idea of them. This is the Milani iTech Define Pen. Basically, it's a dual-sided pen. Okay, so on one side, you get like a felt-tip brow liner, and then on the, so it looks just like that, and then on the opposite side, you get like a felt-tip eyeliner. It swatches so bomb, but I noticed is once you put foundation on, they don't apply nearly as good as they do on like bare skin. On my hand, boom, on my brow, nowhere to be found like i'm literally layering this on five six seven eight nine times then because of the shape of the brow pen it like doesn't apply it where you put it it's like it's hard to explain it's just got indentures in it so it's just kind of hard to work around the brows with this i absolutely loved the way that this swatched so i was disappointed and um i don't know why that looks red but this is their black dark brown shade and then i have the black medium brown shade i'm just gonna stick to black dark brown but that pulls red on me and <laughs> there's nothing red in my undertone i don't understand why they would make a dark brown brow brow pen with a um, red that looks like a tattoo and not like a popping tattoo like what's going on milani your stuff is popping i we were rooting for you this. I got a DM. Let's open this DM. Hey Jackie, this is Miss Treats the name. Hey girl. Your loyal followers. Sorry, I'm looking a hot mess. Thought I would give you a video you idea. Girl. Maybe doing like a throwback Thursday idea. I'm kind of cleaning out some of my old makeup, throwing some stuff away, and I just see a bunch of stuff that you know reminds me of the whole products I regret buying, and um, this is one of them. The BH Cosmetics Foundations, these turned out to be whack. <laughs> I may have used them once or twice and didn't like them. So I was thinking maybe you could do a Throwback Thursday series or a Flashback Friday series where you just go back over some really old, you know, products that were hot at one time and then kind of fizzled out. Okay, talk to you soon. Congratulations on the e.l.f. palette. I didn't get my hands on it, but I'm so proud of you and and happy that you're doing your thing all right talk to you soon bye oh bye boo what are the odds of someone like requesting that and i'm literally doing a product that like not the same thing but you know as you can see the brows turned out to be tragic i like drew a brow on my hand look how beautiful that eyebrow shape is it's just a clean line it's got like it just looks pretty swatched, but on the face, I don't know if it's because the hairs are in the way or if it's because I'm trying to put it, you know, I'm trying to work around foundation, but no, mm -mm, not gonna cut it. It's a no for me. Oh, oh, this is a big one. I was really sad about these. I really wanted these to work and I actually used them in a recent tutorial and I didn't cut it out and I'm not gonna refilm it and you're gonna see me using these, but I just got these new eyeshadow quads from L'Oreal. They swatch so pretty, but on the eyes, it's a no. It's a no. They don't blend, okay? They don't blend. The um, color payoff is very poor when trying to like actually put it on your eyelid. And I'm gonna use a good primer. I'm actually gonna try to do this one justice. I'm gonna use my Kat Von D. This is the um, whatever eyeshadow primer. It's super, super, super sticky. Swatches are not always everything, and that's hard because. You know, you do the swipe with your finger, you put it on, or you put it on the back of your hand. It looks beautiful, but if they don't pick up as well on brushes, or they don't blend as well in that small eye space, it's just 
weird okay it's just weird so i'm gonna use this quad this is the um haute hazel quad now i would say the mattes actually don't apply as bad the mattes do apply kind of nicely but some of these palettes have all shimmer in them okay so this one the boudoir charm was not it wasn't cutting it i'm gonna take that gold palette and let's play with this no actually it was this one, this shimmery brown here. And just in case you're wondering, Jackie, it's because you're using your fingers, duh. I tried it with the brush and no. I'm gonna take this uh, burgundy color. I get that L'Oreal is a drugstore brand, but there are plenty of lower end, lower priced eyeshadow brands that make phenomenal quality eyeshadows. This is an okay, it's okay, but this just don't, what? Like, there are too many inexpensive eyeshadows out there on the market right now. Milani makes some bomb eyeshadows. I wish that they would market them more. And I also do wish that they would um, create more color choices and more palettes. Because the singles are great, but like, I ain't got time to be carrying all them singles. Okay? I just don't. But these, I just feel like the quality, y'all, like... How do you mess up shimmer shadows? Shimmers, I feel like, are the easiest to make. But this just looks very dull and very... This just looks dull and dreary. And I'm actually putting effort into applying this and blending these, but... Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Do better. I actually have another Marc Jacobs product on here. I was not particularly fond of the mascara. I know a lot of people raved about it, swore by it, but... It just didn't do for me what other mascaras out there do. So uh, allow me to show you what I mean by that. It was just, it's just okay. Not one of my favorites. If you're gonna retail for $25, I need, I, I need a bit more for you. Actually, I might need a Rolls Royce with it, okay? Can y'all do that though? Mark, can, can y'all email me or? Most of y'all be thinking, Jackie, you can't pull out any mascaras other than lashes, girl. This is what I'll be talking about when I say no. I actually like clumpier mascaras, but this clumps significantly more than I think it needs to be. Can't win them all, Uncle Mark. This was a miss for me. Sorry, big guy. And you know what's weird? I don't know if it's just me, but this mascara is sticky. Well, the eyeshadow is the better part of the tutorial. Let's move on. ColourPop released these sculpting sticks, and I don't know who they was trying to sculpt but they wasn't trying to sculpt me. These are the bulk of the shades that they created, none of which I would ever choose uh, in any type of life or death situation. Most of them were too light and I get that they are sculpting so they're meant to be gray, but I found that the darkest one, which is in the shade Dew, Dew, I don't know, was actually kind of like reddish. And we all swatched these on Facebook Live a couple weeks ago and none of us were here for it, none of us. Then the next shade that they have is like, yikes. And it's like a real, it's really gray. Like it's definitely meant to sculpt. Yeah, yikes is appropriately named. Here's Doom, let's try Doom on top of it. Comes off as red. You don't contour with red, you don't even bronze with red. So I don't even know what that I, what that thought process was like in the lab. Like I don't know what went wrong. You know I love everything else from ColourPop, but this was, Mm -mm. Let's run that back one more time. Let's run that back one more time. I wonder what happens when you mix red with gray. <laughs> Guess we're gonna find out. This just... Why y'all got me out here in these streets looking like this? Okay, this actually looks like the same color as that brow pencil we just used. These are just gag gifts you give to your friends who probably have really bad lighting. And they be at home thinking they slam for the kids. Really, they slam for funerals. So Tarte blushes actually happen to be one of my favorite line of blushes. I love the pigmentation. I love the quality of them. They stay put. They are dope. The Amazonian clay blushes, but they kind of, this last collection that they launched was a big miss for me, mainly because none of them show up on my skin tone. It was like their lingerie collection, their seductive lingerie. Like I kept going through them and I went through all of them and I was like, okay, get into my color, get into my color. Oh, none of them are my color. Okay, this is Seduce. 
Let me know who you'll be seducing with this shade. I, I, I'd love to meet that person. This is sensual. This is exposed, which is what we will be calling you after you take a picture with flash photography. And this is risque. Then they also launched a highlighter, exposed highlight, which was um, lacking in pigmentation compared to most of their blushes. The darkest out of all of them is actually risque, so I'll just try that one. I was really looking forward to this collection because like I said, they make my favorite blushes, but this was, um... oh, it actually shows up. Maybe because it's on a gray base. The risque actually doesn't look that bad. I think it looks a lot lighter in pan that it does when you apply. All the other ones, I swatch them, no. No more. So now I'm gonna apply Exposed Highlight. It's just, it's just, it's just gray. The only reason why it even looks remotely deflective, like looks like there's some color, is because that is mixing in with the blush. What went wrong, Tart? There's a lot happening and I'm really uncomfortable right now, so I need to like hurry and wash my face. But the last thing I'm going to do, oh, I forgot to talk about just in case I want to color correct, the Urban Decay Skin Color Correcting Concealers. I was so here for these until I saw the shades and I was like, oh, this is peach and this is pink. I don't, I don't, sorry, I get distracted easy. I don't correct with pink. I usually correct with peach, but this is a really, 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 really light. The peach is, there, there, are, there, there are many variations of peach guys. There's, there's light peach, there's medium peach, and there's dark peach, okay? Uh, for those of us that are melanin infused, we, we can't use these, we can't use these. But I love the idea of them, like they swatch nicely and I got like tons of people tagging me, asking me to the review these, what, what, what I'm gonna review? How I'm gonna review these? How? Like, I'm, com I'm convinced y'all be playing me. Y'all really do be trying to play me. The last product that I'm gonna talk about is actually a product that I liked when I first tried them. This was when liquid lipsticks first became popular and I hadn't tried a ton of them at the time. So I didn't really have a lot to compare them to. But apparently a lot of people like hate these liquid lipsticks and they're the LA Girl flat finish pigment glosses. I do like these, but I can see why people don't like them. The reason why people don't like them is because they do crumble. They do crumble, they're very dry, they're very cracky. I guess when I tried them, I'm, I just assume that that's what liquid lipsticks did, but yeah, I can totally see why they're not well received. And this actually happens to be a gorgeous shade. This is in the shade Floor. And I actually did a review on these, but what I didn't realize is usually when I review liquid lipsticks, I don't let them dry down because you gotta get you gotta get in, okay? Drying down starts to stain your lips. What I didn't realize is when I actually start to wear them, I'm like, oh, they are liquid matte. Like they're dry. They're really dry. And they have a very, very, very strong, almost kind of like paint smell, which is a bit off-putting. I wouldn't necessarily say that I hate these. I just don't, I have other, brands that I prefer over these. Okay, I hope y'all are happy. All right, I put all the products that I hate on my face. This was the result. People on Snapchat are trying to play me because I said, do y'all want to see a tutorial on this look? And people were like, yes, queen. Y'all know full well I don't always look like this. Don't try to play me. Well, I hope that you enjoyed today's video. And um, maybe there's some products here that you like that I didn't really care for. That doesn't necessarily mean that I would not recommend them. They just not, they just were a no-go for me, okay? Or I just have better alternatives. So, with that being said, if you are not subscribed, please be sure to do so on your way out. I'd love to have you join the Jackie Ina family. And I'll see you guys, hopefully, on my next video. Bye! Oh, I can't wait to do a face mask. God, dog.